Welcome back to Inside Look, an Inside Ambition segment where we take a deep dive into something happening here at Drexel. I'm Alexandra George. Happy first day of March. You know, the month that goes in like a lion and out like a lamb. Or if you're a vegetarian like me, in like a leek and out like a legume. March is arguably the most important month of the year. It is National Music in Our Schools Month, National Ladder Safety Month, and National Bleeding Disorders Month. When you add that all up, it sounds like a repainting of the band room ceiling gone bad. Hashtag mute Larry's trombone. Hashtag fix the ladder. Hashtag fix the custodian. A friendly reminder to support your local custodians. Most famously, March is Women's History Month. Drexel, although named after and run by a white man, has recently been honoring women in its own way. Now let's take an inside look. First, in today's segment, we're going to talk about the background of Women's History Month and women's contribution in business. Second, we'll look at some female-run startups right here in Philly. And third, we'll tell you all about Drexel's own small business program, which gave loans to two companies run by women of color this year. Up until and throughout the 1970s, schools and the general public had effectively no knowledge or discussion about women's history. It took an education task force in Sonoma County, California, to propose the idea of a Women's History Week back in 1978. Schools and communities across the country adored the idea, and over a hundred women in the community traveled the U.S. to teach and give presentations. The week concluded with a commemorative parade and an essay contest on the topic of a real woman, to which hundreds of students submitted entries. Believe it or not, this essay topic was originally pitched as Real Housewives of New Jersey. Feminism is always ahead of its time. Inspired by the success of Sonoma County's efforts, the Women's History Institute began their own local celebrations in 1979. They then began lobbying the federal government to recognize a National Women's History Week. The Institute's efforts paid off in 1980 when President Jimmy Carter issued the first presidential proclamation declaring Women's History Week as the week of March 8th. By 1987, the National Women's History Project had successfully petitioned Congress to extend the holiday to the full month of March, thus creating Women's History Month as we know it today. And in honor of said month, today we're going to look at women's achievements in business. Last year, women made enormous strides as entrepreneurs and company leaders. As of December 2020, 40% of businesses in this country are owned by women. That's 12.3 million businesses. Moreover, women of color were the leaders of 64% of all new female-owned businesses established last year. Not to mention, women own 36% of small businesses worldwide. Plus, businesses run by women with diverse backgrounds and causes are thriving here in Philadelphia. One such business is Angel Energy, an apparel company that seeks to bring awareness to domestic violence and its survivors, many of whom are children. CEO Sarah Ripley, herself a survivor of domestic violence, donates 25% of the company's proceeds to a different domestic violence charity every single month. Another successful Philly women-run startup is Buddha Babe, a design studio that creates accessories for babies and toddlers, as well as home decor. They also offer group sewing classes, private kids parties, and community events. Pre-COVID, of course. Plus, they choose to sustainably source textiles only from natural and organic cotton. What's not to love about that? CEO Tina Dixon Spence was inspired to use high quality materials after noticing that her newborn son would sometimes get rashes from the clothes she would buy him. Apparently, she even named her startup after him because she says he looked like a laughing Buddha when he laughed as a baby. My mom says I looked like a wrinkled raisin when I laughed, but shriveled sweetheart just doesn't have the same ring to it. Since 2017, Drexel has partnered with two West Philly organizations, the Corridor Collaborative and the Financial Services Institution, to run the Be Smart Small Business Development Program. This program offers coaching and funding opportunities to small businesses here in Philadelphia. Wow, would you look at that! Drexel's being civically engaged for once! The 2021 program culminated on January 14th with a bang, committing over $25,000 in loans to small businesses owned by women of color. Although often neglected, small businesses create 1.5 million jobs annually. This year, 10 local entrepreneurs were accepted into the program. 
five of which graduated with a robust business plan along with other tools for success. Andre Dworshin could never. Topics taught through the Be Smart program include business planning, digital marketing, accounting, and financial literacy. The program concludes with a pitch competition during which the entrepreneurs share their business proposals hoping to attain a minimum of a $10,000 loan. If my student loans are any indicator, that interest rate is gonna be steep. Regardless, sign me up for that Dragon Tank production deal. After the competition, faculty within the Drexel School of Entrepreneurship offered follow-up coaching to all the startups as they continued to develop and expand. This year, two businesses obtained loans from the West Philly Financial Services Institution and Entrepreneur Works. The first business, Advocate for Me, is a Black-owned childcare center that serves special needs children. They offer inclusive respite care and an after-school program. Ah, aftercare. When I first discovered my love for older men. Advocate for Me aims to support working guardians who struggle to find a balance between their professional life and providing care to their children. The company also seeks to provide resources, advocacy, and training to special needs families. Founder and CEO LaVon McMillan has a child with special needs herself, and she's been an educator for over 13 years. She also wrote a book from a child's point of view about the need for inclusion in early childhood intervention strategies called What About Me? Coincidentally, that's also the title of the poem Penn's Quaker penned about me after he saw Mario and I getting cozy under the stairs in main building. Hashtag sorry not sorry. Hashtag sowing my wild oats. Hashtag Quakers are for oats. The second business that obtained a loan upon the conclusion of the Be Smart program was Flourish Bake Shop. It's an Asian American and Pacific Islander owned bakery offering custom baked goods to the Philadelphia community. The company has committed to helping those struggling with unemployment at all the 2020 graduates to become pastry chefs, creating a multitude of job opportunities here in West Philly. Co-founders Cynthia Sung and Ben Applegate especially seek out those who have faced troubles such as addiction or incarceration. Citizens Bank and the Merchants Fund also gave both of these companies additional small dollar loans. Again with the loans. During its run in 2019, 89% of the program's participants were women and 93% of the participants were black. Over the course of three years, Be Smart has granted over $132,000 in loans to its startups. That's almost enough to cover the hospital bills of that poor, bloodied custodian and to pay for extra trombone lessons for Larry. This March, let's make sure that we're acknowledging all women in our conversations about women's history. It is crucial to acknowledge intersectionality when it comes to these issues. Not to mention, Black History Month was literally yesterday. So let's make sure that we're keeping those conversations going. Now we want to hear from you. What are some of your favorite women-owned businesses in Philly? How do you think we can support them during this global pandemic? Did you play an instrument in middle school? Let us know in the comments below. And as always, to stay up to date with all of our content, make sure you're subscribed to our YouTube channel and following our Instagram. Thanks for watching, stay safe, and we'll see you soon.